If you like the video make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. For more videos like this. For those who didn't believe in ghosts or the paranormal, what experience did you have that changed your view? When I was about 14 years old, my mother and I went to the home of her best friend's mom, who had recently passed away. Their family offered my family a ping pong table, but we had to pick it up ourselves out of the basement. I got stuck taking the front end and walking up the stairs backwards. As I reached the top steps, I looked down at my mother and the gray lady standing next to her. She looked from my mom to me, as if confused or curious about what we were doing. The lady was all shades of gray, dressed in clothing from approximately the 1890s. She had her hair pinned up and topped by a small fascinator, a neck-high collar, narrow sleeves with small puffed shoulders, a slim corseted bodice, and a small bustle skirt. Something almost completely unexplainable was the time I was out in the woods behind my house, my property, with my friend when a small rock was hurtled from the trees behind me. My friend was next to me, equally stunned, especially since the rock had managed to strike the fence behind us with such incredible speed that the sound it made caused a ringing in our ears. It wasn't an acorn falling from above since it had come from behind me, missing my head by about an inch. There was nobody else in the forest with us considering it was my property and my family was not home, and the accuracy it had to have to strike the wire cow fence is something that boggles my mind to this day. In my opinion, it was a paranormal experience since absolutely nothing else my mind can conjure up makes sense. I'll start with the most recent. My best friend died unexpectedly, and weird things started happening. I regret not writing it down when it happened, but my daughter and her dad were in my attic going through his things packed up there. Later, I went to bed and discovered a quilt lying on my bed that I had never seen before. I figured they pulled it out of the attic and gave it to me. The next day I mentioned it, and their mouths dropped open as no one had removed the quilt from the attic. A couple years later, my ex passed away in my driveway after we arrived home after we drove to his sister's funeral in another state. After he passed, I kept experiencing all kinds of weird stuff. I always take a bottle of water to bed, and the bottles creak and snap continuously while I lay in bed reading. No, it wasn't expanding and contracting. It seemed intentional. Then something would bump into my bed. Nothing there. I would feel someone sit on my bed. I'm wide awake, and I see nothing. I'd feel someone touching me, petting my head, etc. I just kept telling myself it was nothing until my adult autistic son started busting into my room at night, absolutely terrified. Someone hit him in the back, grabbed his arm, pulled his blanket off, etc. I will never forget the terror on his face. Every single night. I was pissed off. I screamed for it to get out, burned sage, put salt down whatever I found online that was supposed to work, and it did for a day or two, then back to the harassment. I was at my wit's end. How do you fix something like this? So, I posted the story online, asking for help. A guy offered to help me and requested pictures of where the activity was happening, which I provided. He got back to me and told me my friend and ex-husband had attachments, they were both alcoholics or addicts. He moved them on. Peace and quiet for a couple months, and it starts up again. I ended up contacting this guy three times, and he told me that I was astral projecting in my sleep, and these low vibrational entities would be attracted to my light and follow me home. He told me it would continue to happen, so I had to learn to move on. A year later, I ran into him on another forum, and I mentioned that I never learned how to move them on. He did something because we've never had another encounter since, and it's been four to five years. I saw a black being, like a completely black silhouette of a man, with faintly glowing white eyes walking on my window one early evening, around 6 a.m. The way it walked was as if gravity were reversed or something. My room had this weird green glow to it, I can't really describe it. It looked at me and then disappeared in a snap, along with a green light. That, along with some more personal and religious experiences, convinced me that our world is paranormal by nature. My other family members also had strange stuff happen to them. My great-grandma saw a levitating, shining white cow above her field back in the early 1950s. It disappeared when she neared it. Strange SHT like this makes life more interesting. A couple of years ago, I witnessed an unidentified aerial phenomenon with a friend. I thought that I would never witness anything like it again. I moved to the country for a year, and this past winter I saw something similar coming into the atmosphere. I then caught an orb on video shortly after. A few days go by, and I'm outside behind my mom's house. I see something zooming across the top of the trees on the horizon. I got excited after what happened a few days prior. I ran down a hill to where our large garage is and went behind it. There, I see multiple orbs zigzagging around in the sky. I went to get my wife to make sure I wasn't going crazy, and when we walked behind the garage, there's one right where I had been standing about 100 feet up. 
I pointed at it, and she said she could see it. It then straight lined towards the horizon at a very fast speed. I watched them move around for a couple of hours and started trying to catch them on video and night shots on my camera. I was looking through my camera when I happened to look straight up. There was one right there above me. Watch me watch them. I had a few more experiences while in the country, but I didn't make contact. I recently moved back to the city, and they followed me. They don't zigzag around anymore and are stationary most of the time until I stare at them for a minute or two. Then they will go in a straight line away from me. Sometimes I'll catch them in a group, and they will all go in different directions. It's been about six months now. Santiago Creek Wash, Orange, California. This is a true story, and it happened about 15 years ago. I used to spend a lot of time in Lake Tahoe and returned home to Santa Ana after several months. The morning after I returned, I walked from our home in Park Santiago to coffee in Old Town Orange. While I crossed over a bridge on Grand Avenue that spanned a wash that had a bike path and steep side embankments, I looked down to the left and saw a dark-haired man walking around, agitated below by the bike trail. He was clawing at his chest and white shirt and seemed completely disoriented. He was facing me, to his left was the two-story brick wall beneath the gas station, and to his right was the bike trail and deep rocky wash. As I stood and watched him, I got my phone out to call the police in case he started taking his shirt off, I'd run across pervs on the bike path in the past. Then suddenly, he bent down and picked up a red messenger bag. I noticed there was something white, like a sheet, at his feet. As I thought it odd that I hadn't noticed it before, it all disappeared right in front of my eyes. There was nowhere he could have gone, as the area was a small land patch with only a tree and a tall wall. I thought, ha, huh, and then I just continued my walk. My husband picked me up at Starbucks to drive me home. As we drove back over the wash, I told him what happened. He looked at me and said, you saw a ghost, someone was stabbed to death down there while you were gone. I saw a full-bodied apparition of a little girl in a blue dress with blonde hair staring at my Christmas tree with the saddest look on her face. I was lying on the couch, so I jumped up and shrieked at the same time. She just vaporized into thin air, and I don't understand how I knew, but I knew she was just around the corner in the kitchen, and I got the feeling I scared her. I had already suspected there might be a child spirit in the house, but this was the first time I had actually seen her. And I did feel bad thinking about how sad her face looked. So I decided to talk to her, and I said something to the effect of, I'm sorry I scared you. It's okay if you're here, but you're not allowed to scare anyone, and jokingly, I added, except for my friend L. He's a twerp. L and his girlfriend, K, were coming by later to hang out. So my two friends show up, and we hang out and talk and watch TV and I don't mention the little girl. So the night goes on, and L falls asleep on the couch. K and I are sitting at the table, and L just comes alive off the couch, screaming, jumping up and down, and slapping his chest like he's trying to put out a fire. K is freaking out and asking what's going on with you, and he gets his bearings after a minute and tells us he had a nightmare about this little girl with a big creepy smile and fangs climbing over his body while he was sleeping, and he was afraid she was going to attack him, so he jumped up to try and get her off of him. It was in that moment that I realized whatever I thought this was in my house was not a sad, lonely little girl. It was absolutely terrifying, and I still feel guilt to this day over my offhanded comment about L, whatever that thing was. When I was around 20 years old, I lived with my best friend in an apartment. I had been seeing what looked like a black figure that was either really tall or was clinging against the living room corner and sticking its head straight out at a 90 degrees angle. I never spoke about it and I know I didn't because I was a big believer that you could speak things into existence. Scared of ghosts? Talk about being scared of ghosts. You'll see a ghost. Anyway, I saw it quite frequently, never head on. Always at the corner of my eye, but in the exact same place in the exact same position. There's nothing that could have caused the illusion of there being something there, it was an intersecting wall that ended in the corner of the hallway that only had doors in it, and directly behind where I would see it was the bathroom, but we always keep the bathroom door closed. Nothing but a dark hallway. My friend and I were in the living room just talking, and she looked at me and said, I have to tell you something. I keep seeing this thing in the hallway. I didn't even let her finish. I started pointing exactly where it was, almost shouting, right there? We talk about that every so often, and I haven't seen anything like that since we moved. It was so freaking eerie that we saw the exact same human-shaped black void in the exact same place and in the exact same way. Never having talked about it before. When I was eight, my sister and I moved to a small town in Ohio. There were some busy streets, but the road we lived on was out of the way of everything, so no cars drove down it. There was a park in the local middle school behind our house, but there was a separate entrance in order to enter or exit those areas. 
There were also several local children on my street that were around our age, so we would play outside as often as possible. The community we were a part of was also a very close-knit one, and the downtown was only half a mile away, meaning that there was plenty to do in our spare time. So, it's the 4th of July. It had been celebrated at that park behind our houses, so we were allowed to stay out late. Me, my sister, and three of our friends were messing around in the parking lot of the middle school at around midnight. Then, one of us thought that we had seen something peeking out from behind the other side of the middle school. So, we did what any frightened and idiotic eight-year-old would do, and we hid behind the other side of the school and dared each other to peek. Now it eventually came my turn to look. I swear that when I peeked around that corner, I saw something darting back behind the school, and its legs were wrong, like a dog's if it was standing on its hind legs. We did eventually check the other side of the school, and there was nothing there. This, on its own, would have been a fun story. But we saw it two more times, once on Halloween night, when we ended up tailing it to one of our friend's houses before it disappeared into the woods behind us, and it wasn't that friend playing a prank on us. She was an only child and chasing the thing with us, so there would have been nobody to pretend to be it, and another time when my sister and another one of our friends ran into it, staring at them from under a streetlight. They hightailed it out of there but never got a good look at its face. That was around 10 years ago now, and none of us have any idea what it was. But I don't think that it's that surprising that both me and my sister are now obsessed with horror. Growing up, I would always have dreams of demons and Cerberus chasing me, and I needed to fight. I mean, from a young age, four-fifths. As I got older, I always had an uneasy feeling at home, and my mom would mention hearing voices at night, and she would burn sage regularly to help keep activities at bay. In high school, I had a friend who mentioned feeling uneasy in my house as well. She said that her mom could see and speak to spirits and asked if I wanted her to come to our house. I said sure, although I was terrified of what she'd say. So she comes into the house, and we give her the usual tour for someone who has never been to your house before. We walked into my bedroom, and she immediately went and opened my closet. Which was odd. She said, very nice, closed it, then walked away. I went into my brother's room. She immediately turned and walked out, and it was like she couldn't get out of the house fast enough. She then told my friend everything she saw or felt while there, who translated it to me, they were Laotian, and I had picked up on some of the language but didn't fully understand it. Basically, I had an ancestor who loved and cared for me very much, protecting me from the evil in the house each night. She was in my closet, which was why she opened it up. She described her, and I immediately knew it was my great aunt, whom I had lost when I was five years old. It was confirmed through a picture I had that that was who she saw or spoke to. My brother's room was the kicker. There were three spirits in his bed. A soldier, a little boy, and an old witch with white hair and eyes who hated us and did everything she could to drive us as a family apart. Which made sense because we had a very toxic upbringing with many fights. What made the hair stand up on my body was that we were telling my brother this days later, and he deadass looked us in the eyes when we described what my friend's mom said the witch looked like and said, I know, because I've seen her. Then he explained to us why he dove himself into religion at a young age, we went to church, but my brother was always much more serious and into it than the rest of us, and why he was studying to be a pastor, because growing up she would torment him and tell him she was going to kill us all and she was stronger than God and he couldn't save us. So yeah, I believe in ghosts and evil because I've lived it. There are many stories that stem from this, but I'm glad we moved the duck out not long after, and I will never go back. My friend's mom also said she would never go into our basement. She didn't elaborate on what she felt was down there, but she refused to even speak past, don't go down there, or I wouldn't go there. My dad also saw something down there he won't speak about, but I know it scared the shit out of him. I had already believed in them when this happened, but when I was 12, we lived in a, what I would consider, very haunted trailer. I have so many stories from that trailer, it's crazy, but I'll just give one here. I was a little shit as a kid and liked to scare people, and I saw my sister go into the bathroom. So I went in her room and laid under her bed, waiting for her to come out so I could jump out and scare her. Well, I heard the bathroom door open and then footsteps getting closer to me. What I saw was not my sister. It was a pair of very pale, almost purple looking legs and feet, and I could see the bottom of either a light yellow dress or skirt. They were not walking normally, but they were almost skipping. They walked in front of me to the wall, did a twirl around, and walked out of my line of sight. I laid there and waited for several minutes, trying to comprehend who or what I just saw. I finally got up and walked to the living room to see my sister sitting on the couch. She was wearing black shorts and was not very pale at all. I asked if she had walked back into her room after she had left the bathroom, and she didn't, she just walked straight to the living room and sat down, not even going in the room. 
I still think about that all the time and what would have happened if I had reached out and grabbed it. I was born in a small town in South Mississippi, but my parents moved to a more central area of the state when I was a year old. When I was about five, we moved to the house that I lived in up until a couple years ago, I'm 21. I feel like I can sense when something isn't right, sort of like a sixth sense, I guess, and in the house, it often felt like there was a presence in there, especially when I was alone. I'd had numerous friends and family stay the night over the years and report to me that they felt something following or watching them in the house. A little off topic, as this doesn't necessarily have anything to do with what I'm going to say, it just demonstrates that the area in and around my house may have been involved in something. The house was located at the corner of a neighborhood with basically a forest behind it and, to the side of it, a creek running maybe 200 yards behind the house. My childhood best friend and I grew up in the woods and felt at home there, though we always felt like we weren't necessarily alone sometimes, and it would freak us out, but we actually enjoyed the adrenaline rush of feeling like we were in danger, I do not have that same kind of feeling anymore. Fast forward to when I'm probably 12 and the woman who owned the land behind the house had it all chopped so she could sell the timber maybe a year or less prior. By this point in time, some of the undergrowth and saplings had begun to grow back, and much of it was probably waist high. It's probably between lunch and five, and we're in what's left of the woods, trying our hearts out to build our own forts. I'm up closer to the house, and he's down maybe 20 yards from the creek, near a much smaller stream where my dad often dumped deer and fish bones and guts for the coyotes to eat. Despite the distance, we could see each other closely due to the low height of the growth. I finish my simple, and poorly made, fort and relax for a moment. For some reason, I decide to suddenly stand up and look down at where my friend is to see how he's coming along. When I look down there, I see a dark figure, maybe six feet tall, standing behind him with his hand raised above my friend's head, like he was about to strike him. Naturally, I call out a warning to my friend, and as he turns to regard me, the figure just vanishes. One moment it's there, and one moment it just isn't. I tell him what I saw, and he believes me and thanks me for possibly saving him. A year or so later, I was retelling what happened to my brother and some of his friends to kind of scare them, even though they're all like five years older than me, lol, when my brother went pale. Later, he tells me that he saw the same thing or something similar. He told me that one of the times we were playing hide and seek in the woods, something we and many of the neighborhood kids did often, I was the last one he hadn't found. He said he was down near the creek when he saw some brush on the wood line rustling. He thinks he's found me, so he calls out to me and says he knows where I'm at. He runs over and pulls the brush back when a dark figure runs by him from the spot he was looking at. He said he was so scared that he sprinted back to the house, only to find me in the kitchen eating something. The figure was seen or thought to be seen many different times over the years by many of us and our friends, so we just referred to it as the figure and stopped going into the woods at night or near dusk because we were afraid. I guess it is definitely worth nothing that there was a pretty large graveyard, maybe 50 yards, in front of the house. Does anyone have any guesses as to what the figure was? Had many other people not seen the same thing independently, today I would think my mind had played a trick on me. I'm curious what everyone else thinks. I've had quite a few paranormal events in my life since the age of seven, when my Native American family claims I was nearly taken by the little people, too, actually seeing apparitions. One of the most prevalent spirits that I've seen is my great-grandma. After my daughter was born, I would catch a glimpse of a lady in white with tumbling curls of silver, just like my grandma had before she passed away, and at one point I wasn't the only one who saw her. I had some friends over with my daughter asleep in an adjacent room. We were having a good time and got kind of loud when suddenly we heard a very loud shush. From the direction of my daughter's room. Everyone turns to look and freezes because there's grandma, pissed as hell, worried we were going to wake the baby, I guess. She turned and walked through the closed door, and everyone just slowly looked at each other, terrified for a moment, and then began tripping over each other to get away and check on the baby. I managed to calm them down, and as we opened the door, ghostly grandma just waltzed through. We all caught one last glimpse of her sitting in the rocking chair on the far side of the room. Before she seemed to get up and leave, the rocking chair creaked like someone stood up and then just stopped rocking entirely like someone had held it in place. I didn't get to host hangout nights after that. My brother, my husband, and I all decided to go catfishing one night. As usual, we get there around dusk, pick out spots, and gather firewood before dark. Night falls, it's a breezy early summer evening, and the sky is cloudless and full of stars. But it's a new moon, so it's still quite dark. We're fishing, not catching more than a few perch, and it's getting close to 1am, so we're starting to talk about packing up. But first, the guys head down the river a short way, only about 50 yards, maybe less, to check a few other spots. 
I stay by the fire and decide to lay down a little and enjoy the quiet. A few minutes go by, and I hear my brother call out, Hey, uh, are those flashlights? I sit up and look where he's pointing, a spot upstream and across the water past me. Flashlights would be kind of odd because of the location and time of night, anyone who would be out there would have already been there. There are three little round lights, and they do look like flashlight beams. But not really. For one, they're very concentrated and circular, there's no beam. That part of the riverbank is also a very steep, muddy cliff, just full of brush, so it's kind of weird that there's someone there when there's at least half a dozen easier ways to approach. And the lights aren't moving, right? They're sort of erratic, but the movements are smooth and don't bounce like someone walking down a cliff would be moving a flashlight, and the movements are in sort of figure eight patterns, one breaking off and moving to the side before rejoining the others. We watch for a minute, commenting on how weird they're acting. But if it's another person, we need to know, because they aren't getting closer, and apparent flashlights just pointing at us is creepy behavior. So, I move over to where they were sitting, and my husband and brother take off at a brisk pace towards where the lights are. I'm watching the weird things, and as the guys get closer, they start really getting weird. One vanished completely before reappearing not 30 seconds later. On top of a pecan tree that had to have been 15 feet tall at least. The other two split, one heading upstream where the guys are about to round a cluster of brush before they hit the water edge and could see the other bank clearly, and the third one sort of hovering towards me but then back. The guys round the brush, and as soon as they do, the lights flash once, and all of them blink out suddenly. The guys are peering across with their own flashlights, I can see the beams faintly from where I am, but see and hear absolutely nothing, we never heard anything at all, no brush crackling or twig snapping, no water splashing. They head back, and we all unanimously decide that that was ducking weird and it's time to leave. Multiple visits to that spot afterwards, and it still produced some fish for us in the daylight, but when night hit, we would never get a single nibble. We all still talk about it sometimes, and we've still never figured out what the duck those lights were. We tried scaling that bank at a later date, in the daytime, and it's just not possible at that exact location because of the steep cliff and dense brush. You can get from that side to the river, but you have to come out in a spot that's about 30 years upstream and further back. No explanation, no, it was not fireflies, they didn't flicker and were blue-white. I grew up on a farm that has been in my family since the mid-1800s. We have lots of stories. For me, there are two that I have never been able to completely explain away in my imagination. One summer day, late afternoon-ish, I was alone in one of the fields, finishing my chores. I was in a little truck, using it to drive from spot to spot. I would get out, quickly turn a faucet on or off, get back in the truck, and drive to the next faucet. I had to change nearly 20 faucets, each about 50 feet apart. It didn't actually take long on foot, but why walk when I can drive? Anyway, I would leave the truck running and the door open for the same reason I was driving instead of walking, I'm lazy. After the third faucet, the door slammed shut, but I wasn't concerned. I probably parked it on a bit of a hill, and after years of hard use, the springs on the door were sprung. A couple faucets later, I noticed that the engine was revving. Again, the old truck might be low on gas, parked on a hill, maybe it was chalking a bit, etc. I was used to weird things and had a zillion excuses. About halfway through, I was creeped out enough by the slamming doors and revving engine, because it kept happening, that I turned off the truck, closed the door, and walked the rest of the faucets. Now, this is the part I cannot explain. This was in the mid-90s. The radio in the truck was the only way to hear music or news while down there, and it had dials, not buttons. To change the radio station, you had to twiddle the dial. There was a new radio station I was listening to, 99.9 The Wolf. I walked back up to the truck after finishing the faucets, and it felt weird, a very familiar weird, I'm afraid. I got in the truck, turned the key, and the radio came on. To a different radio station, 86.3. Y'all, there was no way to accidentally change the radio. You had to physically turn it, and after years of farm use, it had sand and gunk in it so it wasn't a smooth or easy turn. And there's no way one of my brothers could have gotten there to play a prank without me seeing them, there's no hiding place. I could easily look around, I was the only person around. I was used to watching my surroundings down there, we had snakes, wild pigs, cows, wild dogs, deer, skunks, etc. I had seen no one and nothing for over an hour. But the radio had been changed after I had been run out of the truck. The other one is so cliche. I'm a bit embarrassed sharing it, but my dad experienced the same thing, so to me, it gives it a bit of extra weight. My dad and I were down in the field fixing the tractor. 
In the next field over are a couple old cabins, the original homesteads my distant relatives built and lived in. All morning, the wind had been blowing in a weird way, a sudden, strong gust, then nothing, then a sudden, strong gust. My dad joked that it was like someone trying to get our attention, like constantly knocking on the door or letting the phone ring and ring and ring. I guess that maybe mom was trying to tell us to come home. In other words, we knew it was weird, but weird is normal down there. At one point, dad asked me to get a tool from the barn, a couple hundred yards away. One of the things any farmer or country person does while walking is look around. We are constantly scanning for snakes, skunks, rocks that might trip us, cow manure, etc. I was looking around, not really concerned, just enjoying the morning. I looked right, saw the cows, looked forward, avoided the cow patty, looked left, and saw a misty white orb about chest high near the fence by one of the old cabins. It actually took a couple more steps before it sank into what I had seen. I looked again, and it was still there. A misty white orb is near the old cabin. I looked back at my dad, and he was looking at me. We both looked back at the orb, and it was gone. I got the tool, took it to dad, and about 10 minutes later I said, the wind stopped blowing, and he said, they finally got our attention. Just for a better understanding of my surroundings, I'm from Kentucky. There are lots of wooded areas, and people love their guns, including me. I used to not believe that there was unknown stuff in the woods. I thought maybe Bigfoot could be real, but I severely doubted it. After this happened, I knew there was something unknown out there. I had just bought my first AR-15 style rifle, Ruger AR-556 for anyone who cares, and bought a 60-round drum magazine for it at Gander Mountain while they were going out of business because, why the duck not? Reading up on the drums, I read they were amazing and rarely had any issues at all, this will be important later. A few days after I got it, I finally decided to take it out for a test drive, and my sight in my gun was a little better. Here's where everything went to shit. As I said above, Kentucky is super wooded. Three-fourths of the land I lived on was just thick woods. There was a main path for driving our gator and a few small paths our cows had made in the woods. I decided to walk along our creek, which had a small path half cleared by our cows. At the end of the path is a big field our cows graze in, and I see guns when the cows aren't there. As soon as I crossed the fence to go to the field, I instantly felt like I was being watched closely. I brushed it off because I've walked back there a thousand times before and never been bothered by anything. So, I keep walking and ignore the feeling of being watched, but at the same time, I'm aware of the feeling. I know I feel like I'm being watched, but I wasn't giving it any noticeable attention. The walk to the field along the creek is a very short one, maybe two minutes at a slow pace. The further I walked, the more intense the feeling got, like I was getting closer to whatever was watching me. About halfway there, the feeling got so intense that I couldn't ignore it anymore. The drum magazine I had with me was unloaded, so I stopped and started loading it. I only brought 20 rounds with me because I was just going to sight in my gun, and 20 should have been plenty. So, now I'm stopped, paying extremely close attention to what's going on around me and loading my magazine. The exact moment I started putting rounds in the drum, I smelled something dead, like it had been dead for a while and rotting in the sun. I started looking around, and right behind me was what was left of a possum. It was torn to pieces. It was almost like it was placed there for me to find. The only thing was that it looked like it had been dead for maybe a day at most, and what I was smelling seemed like it was far more decomposed. This obviously didn't set well with me, so I double-timed it on the magazine loading. I guess I should have taken the dead possum as a last chance to turn around. I decided to keep going. I had never had any problems back there before, so I assumed my brain was just being paranoid. I was almost to the field when I saw it. I was at the end of the creek, and the feeling of being watched was unbearable. Just as I was near the end of the creek and the edge of the woods, I heard a splash in the water. Me being on edge, I immediately turned toward the noise, gun ready but no round in the chamber. Walking down the creek away from me was something I will never forget. At least 8 feet tall, probably taller. Very skinny. Imagine a grown man who weighs 120 pounds. Now stretch him out to be 8 feet tall, but his body width stays the same. It had very long arms, and it walked on two legs. The skin stretched tightly across its body. It made no noise, aside from the splash when it stepped in the creek, while it walked. It also had a very weird walk, almost like a waddle, but taking large steps. But that could have been because it was on a muddy creek bank. It was also a light brown color, almost like the color of a deer. Now I know why I felt like I was being watched. Magazine loaded, bolt ready to send a round into the chamber. Remember what I said about the magazine being extremely reliable? 
I press the bolt release on the gun to chamber around just in case this monstrous thing decides to attack, I did not intend on striking first. The round gets stuck somehow and doesn't even budge out of the magazine. I had never used that magazine before, so it didn't fail from heavy use. A bolt closing from a gun has enough force to break your finger, so why didn't this magazine work? My only guess is that something had something to do with it. The magazine never worked right again, and I had to return it to Magpul. Needless to say, I didn't tell them this happened, I just told them the magazine failed several times. Anyway, back to the thing. The gun jammed on the first round, which is usually the easiest. The thing books it out of there without running or making a noise. I had just enough exposure to it to get the details I provided about it. Now, for assumptions. It happened in late May last year. I still have the emails from Magpul regarding the drum, so I'm using those as references because, after this, I needed something reliable. As for what the creature was, me and a friend who knows more about this stuff than I do have decided it could have been a ducking Wendigo, the reason we think Wendigo is because everything I described matches them almost perfectly. I had read that they are incredibly thin and tall, have a stench of death that follows them everywhere, which explains the smell of the possum, are very fast, can be several colors, light brown included, and that they sometimes violently kill other animals to scare humans, again, the possum. The only thing that we couldn't come up with was its behavior. Why am I still alive? Wendigos are supposed to be incredibly aggressive. Aside from watching me, it did nothing. It didn't try to attack or confront me, it ran for me like it was scared or trying to draw me where it wanted me. This being said, I have never had another encounter with it. I have gone to the same field, taking the same path, expecting to be watched, and have not gotten that feeling of being watched as strongly as that day. Something was out there, and you can't convince me otherwise. I've tried to trick myself into thinking I'm being watched out there, and it still has no comparison to that day. Since moving into this house in 2009, everyone in my family has experienced something and believes this place is haunted, except maybe my dad, who is still skeptical. He's been home alone before and heard someone walking around upstairs. My grandmother's music box, this is the thing that happens the most, has started to play, and he says it's because you walk too hard around it but we could literally all be in another room and you will hear the tiny piano start playing that old-timey piano song. I forgot what it was called. Anyway, usually the music box will play when something happens in our family, good or bad, and we always take it as a sign of my grandmother watching over us. But there is also a different sort of thing we think is in the house that isn't my grandmother. The first thing that I always seem to forget happened a few years after moving in. My boyfriend at the time was staying over, and we weren't allowed to share beds, so he was sleeping in the guest room. The next day, he brings up last night, what were you doing? I'm honestly confused, as I hadn't left my room all night and slept really well. He says, I woke up, and the door was open. You walked in and stood by the bed. I kept asking you what you're doing, and you wouldn't answer me, you just stared. So I just went back to sleep. I wasn't even really creeped out by this because I knew that I hadn't gotten up, so I said maybe it was my mom doing a load of laundry and she peeped in to see if he needed anything. We asked her, and she said she hadn't been in the basement since the day before. So my dad was out west visiting my brothers for a month, this was five years ago, and during this time I was living in Quebec, a few provinces away, so only my sister and mom were at the house. It's late at night, and my sister is packing in the other room for a camp retreat she's going to. My mom is in bed alone, sleeping. Mom wakes up and sees what she thinks is my sister standing beside her bed, kind of illuminated by the moon but really it is just a black outline of my sister. She keeps asking her what she's doing, but she won't answer. So finally, mom just yells out her name, and a few seconds later, my sister runs into the room, thinking my mom needs help or something. The thing beside the bed is gone. A few nights later, my sister is sleeping in her room, wakes up in the middle of the night, and sees the same thing standing at the foot of the bed. She calls out for my mom, who runs in and tells her to leave, and they both sleep together. After my sister left for her camp, my mom was too afraid to stay at the house alone, so she slept on the couch at my aunt's cottage. During this whole thing, my mom is sending me texts telling me about it, and eventually she says she has a family friend to try and bless the house. I can't remember how that worked out, but I don't think the lady ended up coming into the house. Three years later, I'm back at home and in my room, sleeping. My room is in the basement, and I'm the only one who sleeps down here. I woke up around 3 a.m. facing the wall side of my bed and lay awake for a few minutes just thinking about shit, not really tired. After a bit, I roll over to switch to the cool side of the pillow, and that ducking thing is standing beside the bed, staring down at me. It was black, had hair, and had the shape of a woman, but I couldn't make out anything distinct. 
my body turned hot and felt like I was being stabbed with 100 pins and needles. I rolled back the other way, pulled up the covers, and called my house phone, crying to my mom that the thing was in my room. She came in and yelled at it to leave, and we slept together on the couches outside my room. Ever since then, I don't sleep with the light off unless I have my boyfriend with me. Then I feel safe. I don't think this is classified as sleep paralysis because we've all been woken up to it and stayed awake having conversations with other family members about what we've seen. It's been a while since anyone has seen it, but you still get a weird feeling once in a while. A few things about the house, the man who built it and his wife lived in it. There is a hidden safe in my closet that we've never been able to get open, even though he gave us the combination. My mom and I both get night terrors, hers are worse than mine, and she needs to be shaken awake from them. One of my good friends in high school had this lake house, it was given to his parents by their grandparents, and they lived in this house from 1990-93. One day, in 1993, his mom woke him and his younger sister up and left the house. Mind you, it was 2-3 to 3 a.m. they went to a restaurant that was open 24-7, stayed there until sunrise, went home, packed all of their clothing and other important things, and left the house. They never went back, and his mother will not talk about what happened. They still own this property, it has two homes on it and is lakefront, probably worth millions. The power is still on, and his dad comes and checks on it every so often. So after hearing that story, we, of course, went to the lake house. Pulling up a motion sensor, a flood light flicked on and stayed on. I unlocked the deadbolt, which requires a key to open on both sides, and walked in. Instantly, I got that creepy feeling like someone was watching me. We walked around for about half an hour, walking up the stairs and unlocking another door with a deadbolt on both sides, and man, was it eerie, all the furniture still set up, his sister's nursery still intact, and a tea kettle still on the stove. Just straight up creepy in every way. Finally, we go to leave and decide to go through the garage. I have the keys, and, again, you had to have a key to unlock it from the inside. I'm trying to open the door and turn around to get a light, just in time to see a rock come from somewhere down the hall and hit my foot. Staring at all three of my friends and not seeing them do anything with their arms, legs, or anything else, I decide to try to unlock the door more rapidly. Finally, find the right key and put it in the keyhole. As soon as I do, the garage door opens about two feet, and thanks to the motion sensor floodlight that's still on, I can see a chair in the garage. The chair proceeds to be thrown against the wall with a violence I can't describe, and the garage door is slammed shut. I turn around to say, let's get the hell out of here and see a rock come from darkness and hit the wall with a lot of force right next to my head. At this point, I'm done. We run back to the stairs down to the basement, and for the safety of the door we came in, the door, which requires a key on either side to lock or unlock and we left unlocked, is locked. Freaking out and hearing what sounds like heavy running footsteps upstairs, I am panicking to find the key. Finally, I find it and unlock the door. We ran to the next door, and, you guessed it, it was locked. I again find the right key, as the footsteps are getting louder and coming down the stairs. We run out the door, and it gets left open by the last person out, and then as we go to shut it, the door is slammed shut, and instantly you hear the deadbolt get locked. At this point, we are only focusing on getting out of this place. We run to the truck, and all four of us pile in. As soon as the truck starts, every single light in the house comes on at once. My buddy slams it into reverse, and we are flying down this very long driveway, and as soon as our tires leave the gravel and hit the pavement, every light in the house turns off, leaving it in absolute darkness. Something very, very bad is in that house. I'm not sure what, but I'll never go back, and I absolutely believe in ghosts, demons, etc. Years ago, I was sleeping with my fiancé at his mother's house. I woke up in the middle of the night with the weirdest feeling that someone was watching me. I scanned the room and noticed someone standing at the foot of the bed, on my fiancé's side. The figure was pitch black and featureless. I'm terrified, and I think, oh, I must be dreaming. Then I look over at my fiancé, and he's staring at it too. It was the most horrifying moment ever. Suddenly, fiancé sits up really quickly and aggressively. In that moment, the thing disappeared. Afterward, I wanted to dig a hole in the mattress and sleep under him. I found out later that pretty much everyone in his family has seen this thing, and they call it the shadow. It still makes my skin crawl just thinking about it. That night was the most frightened I have ever been in my life. My, dad's side, family all grew up in a super old farmhouse. The rumor was that it was moved there by oxen or that it was built where it sits, whatever, about 200 years ago. Long story short, it's been in the family longer than anyone can actually remember. 
I vividly remember this fellow hanging out around the farmhouse, leaning against the side, standing in the shade. I always thought he was a family friend, but I couldn't remember his name. He was just there. I would even have dreams of this cowboy clad guy waking me up at night. He would take my hand and take me out around the back of the house and show me a cellar, one filled with red lights, he would go down there, and I'd wake up. Years passed, and I never really thought about it. One day I asked one of my aunts who that guy was, and she turned white as a sheet. Everyone. And I mean everyone. Whoever grew up in that house remembers this cowboy guy. For some of us, he was just creepy, for others, it was downright terrifying. My aunt would have dreams of him coming out of a door in her bedroom, which was filled with red lights. He'd try to take her through the door. There wasn't a door in her room, much like there wasn't a cellar like I had seen. She said she would hide in her treehouse, watching him walk back and forth beneath her. There was never a treehouse. We also all remember crawling around under the old house, but there's no way any of us would have gone under there. It was extremely dangerous. So basically, we all knew this creepy old cowboy ghost nearly 30 years apart. We remember so vividly rooms that didn't exist, closets, and things of that nature. Always full of red light. Nobody lives there now, the house was falling apart. Sometimes we all try to draw the layout, and it's wrong. Things don't match up. It's like our memories were all distorted. So weird. Cowboy never actually hurt anyone. But he still exists in our memories as a very, very real guy. I have three stories, for context, I grew up in the hillbilly south in an area that was civil war battlegrounds and was known to have a lot of paranormal activity around it. I also grew up in the country in an area with lots of woods around, so you can imagine that nighttime was pretty spooky. 1. When I was around 14, my parents got divorced. My dad had an affair and married the woman he had the affair with. A couple years later, his new wife passed away, and when she passed, he told me he didn't want to sleep in there, my parents, he, and my stepmom's, old bedroom. So he took my room, and I took my parents' old bedroom. One night I was getting ready for bed, and I went to close the bathroom door. The bathroom was attached to the bedroom, and there was one way in and one way out. I closed the bathroom door, turned off the lights, and got in bed. I closed my eyes only to hear knocking from inside the bathroom door. At first, I assumed something fell, but then the knocking got more persistent and fast, it felt like there was someone inside the bathroom knocking to get out. I've never run so fast to my sister's room. I asked her if I could sleep with her, and we cried because we were both scared. 2. This is when I was around 14. This was before I switched rooms with my dad. I had joined the girls' soccer team at my school. During that summer, we would stay at each other's houses and have sleepovers. This specific night, I was at another friend's house and didn't go. My sister was on the volleyball team at her school and had early morning practice the next day, and my dad goes to bed at like 7 because he is a dialysis nurse and works really early shifts. So even on the days he's not working, he still goes to bed early, this will tie into the story later. When I woke up at my friend's house the next morning, I got a text from some of the soccer girls saying, did Katie lose her phone in your yard? Will you go out and check if it's there? I had no idea what they were talking about, so I called them. Apparently that night, at around midnight, they went and rolled my house as a prank. When they got to my house, they saw the lights in my bedroom were on, and two figures, me and my sister's height, were in the room, pacing back and forth. Suddenly, the figures turned their heads as if to look out the window at the soccer girls rolling my house. I was a little in shock at first because I was not home that night. When I got back to my house, I asked my sister if she had a friend over last night, and she said no. She went to bed at 8 because she had early morning volleyball practice. I asked my dad if he had been in my room or had anyone over, and he said no, he went to bed at his usual time. To this day, I still don't know what that was or what they saw, but I am 26 now and still can't go into that room without getting chills. 3. This story, to this day, is the one that freaks me out the most. I was about 15 when this one happened. It was a normal day when one of my friends dropped me off at my dad's after soccer practice. He wasn't home, and I was waiting for my mom to come pick me up to stay with her and my stepdad for a few days. I was there alone for a couple of hours while she was still at work, and I remember exactly what I was doing and watching. I was eating chips in the living room on the couch while watching America's Next Top Model. The sun was setting, and it was getting dark outside. The sun had finally set, and about 10 minutes later I had this dreadful feeling inside, it was like someone or something was watching me. I tried to ignore it at first, but the feeling persisted. Finally, I turned my head to look out the window, and I saw a face. It wasn't a normal face, it was sort of human, but also not. 
the one distinct thing about this face that, to this day, I will never forget is the big, cat-like eyes that were staring at me. It wasn't a cat, though. It had a human nose and mouth but yellow cat eyes. I froze when I saw it and didn't take my eyes away. I was scared that if I looked away, it would disappear, and I would be more afraid of not knowing where it was. I just stared, pulled out my phone, and called my mom to ask if she was almost done. She told me she was one minute down the road. I asked her if she would come inside and get me when she got there. When her headlights came up, the face disappeared. I can't rationally explain it to this day. What did I encounter years ago? I have asked this question a couple times in the past but have never gotten any traction on it. I'm hoping this one gets noticed because I would love to be able to have an explanation for an experience I had about 10 years ago. As I stated, about 10 years ago, my neighbors went on vacation and left me to be in charge of their house. I would feed the pets, and they would let me use their beautiful in-ground pool when I wanted. This family was good to me, but they had a lot of family issues. They had a ton of money but never seemed happy. The police were called over to their house a lot, the dad was having affairs, the mom got really sick, and eventually died, and the kids were having issues of their own, which could be relevant to the story. So naturally, I had my girlfriends come over at night to swim. It was a perfect night out. It was black, with no wind and not a cloud in the sky. We wanted to go for a night swim, so we went over there by ourselves. We couldn't figure out how to turn on the pool lights, but it wasn't a problem because the moon was so bright in the sky. The pool was pitch black and still, and it almost looked like a mirror with the reflection of the moonlight. The pool was shaped like a peanut. The bottom was shallow, about four, and the top of the peanut was deep and had a water slide at the end. We swam for about half an hour in the shallow end. I walked up to her and gave her a hug. As we were hugging, we both heard a noise coming from the deep end of the pool. At first, we thought the noise was the water filter gurgling. It sounded strange and loud. It went from silence to this noise very quickly, so it was very startling to us. We both turned our heads to the deep end and saw the silhouette of a head sticking out of the water at the bottom of the water slide. The dark silhouette was all black with no features. It was shaped exactly like a human head sticking out of the water, with a neck that went under the water line. The noise was coming directly from this shape, it almost sounded like heavy breathing, like you would hear from Darth Vader. We looked at it for what was probably about 5 seconds at the most. The visual was one thing, but the hardest part to explain about this experience was the feeling we felt. Both of us felt this gut-wrenching feeling in our stomachs that something was wrong and that we had to leave now. It made every hair on the back of my neck stand up. It was almost like there was a sense of evil that I felt deep inside, later on, my girlfriend would describe the same feeling. We looked at this head in the water, looked back at each other in confusion, and then looked back where the head was, and in that split second, it was gone. We were crouched in the shallow end, so we stood up to see if someone had gone under the water to hide. There was no one in the pool with us. No waves at that end, nothing. Just the moonlight on the still pool. We slowly stood up, got out of the pool, grabbed our towels, and ran across the street back to my parents' house. My girlfriend spoke about it for about 10 minutes that night and then would never let me bring it up again. That family continued on a downward spiral for years until they eventually got a divorce and moved out. A new family moved into that house, and they have seemed fine and drama-free ever since. I have always questioned if this was an entity attached to that family that caused the bad things to happen to them. Any feedback or ideas would be appreciated. A couple things leave me genuinely shaken. Oddly, both were during power outages. The first was during an ice storm that knocked out power for quite a while. We had in general been doing fine. We live in rural areas and live here, understanding that losing power means we are the absolute last priority for the power company because so few people live this way. I think it was about the fourth day, and I sat down in front of our fire to relax and roast myself. I was completely coherent, not tired, sleepy, or exhausted. I was just sore from repairs a couple days ago. I sat in front of the fire for a minute and was listening to my family talk in the other room about something or other, and I heard all three of them laugh at the first part of the story. There were only four of us in the house. I closed my eyes because the fire was really hot and it was drying my eyes out really badly. Right as I heard my mom start interjecting her side of things, I felt a hand caress my face, like I felt the warmth in the individual fingers, and it slicked back over my hair. This is exactly how my grandma would pet me when I was little. She had died years before this, so I was no longer grieving for her at the time, I wasn't even thinking about her in that moment. But it was just such a familiar sensation. I jumped up so fast that I knocked the chair over and realized my family was still telling the story. I hadn't fallen asleep. I grabbed my flashlight and searched around for a big spider or something, there wasn't anything there, 
and I know what country spider skittering feels like. This wasn't that. I searched the whole house, then went to my family and asked if anyone had been out in the living room. They said no. I am still seriously spooked by this. The second wasn't quite so in your face, no pun intended. It was after dark in the middle of another power outage, and I was sitting and talking with my brother in one room with the door closed with just a crappy camper lantern for light. All of a sudden, there is a bright blue light seeping in around the door cracks. We completely freeze and just watch it, then we realize the power didn't come back on, we always left the overhead light flicked into the on position during outages, so if it comes back on, we can refill water buckets immediately in case it goes out again. I whisper to my brother, the light's not on. He just stares at the door. It just blinks off after about a minute. We jump up and arm ourselves with a baseball bat, scour the house, and find nothing. We ran and looked outside to see what the hell might have caused it, but there's no power anywhere. It's pitch black, and none of our neighbors have their lights on either. We go back in and get settled and just kind of ruminate on it when multiple things start to occur to us. 1. The most logical explanation that we only got power back in a limited capacity doesn't make sense. The hall light is warm yellow not bright cyan blue. The second most logical explanation is that someone must have somehow shown a light into our windows and had it hit the hall. So we go back out and realize all the blinds at the end of the house are closed, no one could have shown a light through the windows, especially not at big ass searchlight intensity. My brother then notices that even if someone had come up to the windows with a light, extremely dangerous on our property, our woods are a death trap, there is no angle in which the light would have been able to get that far down the hallway because of the turn at the end, plus the tool closet door was open when we left the room, which would have blocked any light coming down the hall. We obviously were not able to sleep that night, or for the next few nights, really. I don't know if it was ghosts, ball lightning, or whatever. But it was the freakiest thing that's ever happened to me, precisely because I have no idea what caused it. It never happened again. I have always been a believer, but... This one time I rented a room, I was working in another state, and the first night I heard three taps on the bathroom door, which was right next to my head. The main door was metal and the inner was wood, so completely different sounds. Also, we have concrete walls everywhere, so there's that. This other time I was walking at night in this beach town, another state. I was new to it, so I didn't know how the people behaved there. Anyway, I was crossing a long bridge, let's say 15 meters, and this guy was standing in the middle of it. So I tried not to make eye contact but raised my head and said good night when I was about to pass him. No one was there. I was really surprised, so I looked down the bridge, a 5 meter drop to the water, and I could see very far, and there was nowhere he could have moved. I hated this, I never talk about phenomena. One time I was at home, yeah, in the kitchen, and I saw this little girl standing at the door of the kitchen. We were like 6 feet apart, and she was solid and didn't vanish. She looked at me and walked out of the frame into another space. I thought the girl resembled my ex and that she might have been pregnant, she was, but she didn't have it. This is not the first time children have shown up here, they also did when my daughter was in the oven, and one other time I got the girl pregnant and she didn't have it. But the wildest was this, I was at the previously mentioned beach town, reading, sitting by a window at an awkward angle. I could see the inside of the house, we had to bust the door open one time and never fix it, so I left it open always, and I saw a person's shadow going through a wall behind me. Inside the house, I saw it very clearly, and though I never speak to these things, I was so surprised and caught off guard. I pointed at the wall and said, I saw you. And kept looking at it to see if the shadow came back. A bat flew out of the inside of the house and out the door. I was flabbergasted. It was a very large shadow when it went in. Back in 2011, I was living in a rural town called Monroe, Utah, finishing up my senior year of high school. Monroe is a town of around 2,000 residents and is home to one of the largest mountains in Utah, which my grandparents' house, where I was living at the time, resided at the base of. Our house was on the top of a foothill and overlooked the quaint Monroe Valley. The house itself was about 3,500 square feet with an entryway slash foyer that was approximately 25 feet high, a front room on either side of the entryway, and then the main living room and kitchen towards the back of the house facing the mountain. The upstairs had three bedrooms, a small library, and a balcony overlooking the foyer. The basement was a house itself, complete with three bedrooms, a living room, and a kitchen. At this point in my life, my grandpa had been recently diagnosed with cancer. Because we didn't have a hospital in the area with an adequate treatment center, my grandparents temporarily moved to southern Utah, where there was a hospital, and left me with the house to finish off my high school graduation and part of the summer, May to July. Because of this, 
My house was notorious for having the boys over where we'd have parties and then play massive games of hide and seek in the dark, sounds childish, but man, it was fun. I was also keen on having my friends over at all times because being alone in a large home is creepy sometimes and also because I had several encounters with spirits at one point in my life when I was living with my mom, but that story is for another time. Anyway, I didn't want to be alone in the house and preferred having people over. Well, right around the middle of June, I had two of my best friends over, let's call them Jake and Sam, and each of us had a girl over and had picked a room to hang out with them. If you're a religious person, then you probably believe that certain activities aren't necessarily inviting of the Holy Ghost, and let's just say my two friends and their girls at my place were doing what would be considered uninviting of the Holy Spirit. I was with my best friend's sister and had recently been baptized, so I wasn't trying to get down with this girl at this point. Well, I hear a door shut, and my third friend, let's call him Jaden, shows up after having gotten down with his gal at her place. Now I say this because if you're heavily religious, then you believe that the Holy Spirit was probably not in the house at all on this particular evening, but if you aren't religious, then disregard this paragraph. We end up sending the girls home, and it's just us boys enjoying our senior summer playing COD Zombies, which I wasn't really into, but I enjoyed watching my friends play. Well, 2.30am starts to roll around, and my friend Jake asks if we want to play hide and seek in the dark, but with two caveats. One, we play the game while the COD Zombies theme song plays throughout the house, and two, there's no hiding in the basement because it's pitch black. Looking back to this night, the moon was fairly bright, so your eyes would adjust quickly to the nighttime if you were hiding and seeking upstairs but not at all downstairs. Jake, Sam, and I were into scary shit, but Jaden wasn't the biggest fan of it. Regardless, we all decided to play the game to this creepy music, and Jake was the first one as a seeker. Sam, Jaden, and I immediately agreed to be bastards and hide in the basement because we knew it'd take Jake forever to find us, so we hid in one of the bedrooms that was filled with a bunch of wooden chairs. About 10 minutes into his search, we hear him come downstairs, and he begins talking to someone's on the basement stairs. We then hear him yell something to these people, and then he enters the room we're hiding in. He starts moving loads of these chairs and finds us, and we start giggling like girls because we knew we broke the rules. We ask him who he was talking to, and he says, dude, I thought I was talking to Sam and Jaden, but all of you guys were here, so I have no clue who the silhouettes were on the stairs that were just looking at me and then ran away. Jake loved scary stuff, so we shrugged it off like it was typical Jake trying to make a situation scary or creepy at night. Anyway, 15-20 minutes is a long time for one round of hide and seek, so we decide to just chill in the living room on the main floor while the COD zombie music is playing dimly in the background. After a few minutes of us hanging out, I say, we should watch a real exorcism video. I bet I can find one online. So I bust out my Mac, start searching for a video on obscure websites, and finally find a video. Jake was all for this, but Jaden and Sam were hesitant, understandably so. But I'm me and IDGAF, so I turn it on. Interestingly enough, this was shortly after 3am and was during the witching hour, which I didn't think about until after the fact. So Jake and I are watching this priest just douse this random woman in holy water while the priest is chanting Hebrew at her. The girl is strapped to a table, and her body is convulsing like the chick from the ring. I remember watching this video and getting cold chills immediately, but I was mesmerized because I had never seen anything so raw and real of this nature. I couldn't look away. Sam and Jaden tell me to turn it off, and even Jake looks hesitant. This is where things go south real quick. About 20 seconds into this video, I start hearing a knocking noise, damn, I'm getting cold chills simply typing this. This knocking noise was coming from the master bedroom directly above us in the living room, and it continually gets louder and louder and louder, and suddenly it sounds like four or five people are running and slamming violently into the walls in the room above us. I look at Jake's face because he was sitting next to me, and I can barely make out a look of horror on his face because, again, the lights were turned off everywhere in the house. Then I hear the chandelier and the foyer quake, and at this point I'm on high alert, thinking, oh shit despite Jake fooling around this night, he was a relatively goody-goody, and I had never heard him say the F word, but he immediately screams, turn it the fuck off. I slam my laptop shut, and all four of us run directly to the back doors, which were 10 feet away from us. As we're running, we hear a loud thud thud thud, as if someone is punching the basement crawling from underneath us. It sounded like someone, or something, was trying to just tear through the floor beneath our feet. We make it outside during this time, and everything in the house goes silent. No more running from upstairs, no more chandeliers swinging, and no more punching ceiling noises from the basement, it's just us in the middle of the open night sky, 
torn between trying to look away from the house and towards the mountains while simultaneously checking to see if something was going to run out of the house. The house was dead quiet, as if nothing ever happened, and we were all gazing into the house from the backyard. We were probably out in the backyard for two minutes in complete silence. I had noticed that Jaden was messaging someone frantically when we were outside, and he looked at me and said, Michelle told me she was in the house with her drill team friends like 10 minutes ago, but told me she was only kidding. So what in the hell made those noises? Backstory, everyone in the small town knew my grandparents were away, so it was common for my friends to just pop in the house whenever, especially the drill team gals, because they were some of our close friends. Right after he says this, I look at the other guys, and all three of them are shedding man tears. All three of them were shaken to their core about what had happened. During that 45 second window of pure chaos, we each felt a sense of dread and hopelessness sweep over us. It was 1000% a bad spirit, or a few, that had just been in that house. Well, I have this house for another 6 weeks, and at some point I'm going to have to go back in there and sleep in there, so we have to go back in and see what happened. Understandably, they were strongly against this idea, but I felt spiritually strong because of my recent baptism, so I led the way while we single filely walked in the house while each of their hands was grappling the person's shirt in front of them. We should go to the basement first because it's the scariest and most obvious place where the banging noises were coming from, I say. We slowly creep down the basement steps, and I flip on the lights and see that the living room and kitchen were destroyed. The ceiling fan was lying on the ground, and at first glance, it looked like it was ripped straight off the ceiling. There were broken shards of glass and wood chips from the chaos scattered about the room. Now I'm thinking, how in the hell am I going to explain this to my family? Then we decide to search for the rest of the house. The only other inexplicable thing was that the master bedroom's closet light was turned on, which we didn't ever turn on. That same night, I decided to go to bed in my room while the guys slept downstairs, because I was on this spiritual high and felt safe. But my friends each felt like they had uninvited the spirit that night, so they all slept in the living room downstairs. Jake woke up the next morning and had a nightmare about a little girl standing in the living room watching them sleep, but Jake loves scary things, so we never really knew whether he was being truthful about that dream or not. He's an extremely honest person, but he loves overhyping these types of things, so I never knew what to make of that dream of his. Fast forward to that weekend. My grandparents came over after my grandpa's radiation treatment because I told them what happened. They're somewhat religious, but not church fanatics, so they weren't sure what to believe at first, but they knew I wasn't a liar, and so they took my story as truth. I walked downstairs to the basement with my grandparents, and my grandpa bent to a knee to look at the ceiling fan's wiring, and he said, this was cut perfectly across, someone did this intentionally. This didn't fall out of the ceiling. Since that day, it has only furthered my testimony of a god and of evil. As of 2016, I've started to have weekly reoccurring variations of a dream where I'm in that house with a dark presence. I honestly might go to therapy after talking to my wife about it, as it seems to have caused lingering PTSD in some form for me. I'll be grateful for that night because it caused one hell of a story and an everlasting best friendship with those three guys. What are your thoughts? Do you think the silhouettes on the stairs from earlier that night were the same spirits that messed with us, or do you think they were simply just shadows?